I'll get you read in. Hi, Lisa, it's Jana, and I am here with Nate Payo and Payo. And yes. I am super excited to have him. So I'm going to go ahead and intro him in, and he's going to get into his story, and I'm excited. So three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to Oh My Health, There's Hope. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I am so excited to introduce all of you to Nate, Nate Payo. Um, do you have a passion for doing great things, but find yourself giving up when it gets too hard? Do you pull back or feel vulnerable? when you put yourself out there. That was Nate. He spent his time standing on the sidelines as he watched others succeed with consistent work and effort until he realized, like so many others, what he was lacking was the drive and the desire to reach his own goals and dreams. As a result, his goals were not being fully realized, but now they are. <laughs> I'm like so excited to have Nate with us today. Hi, Nate, thank you. Thank you, thanks for the good, uh, the warm welcome. Appreciate, it. glad to be here. Well, I'm really excited to have you because rarely do I have um, men on the show, but the listeners love it when they come on and give a whole different kind of viewpoint. And right after I interview, I interview another guy. So it's so weird. <laughs> Sometimes it just has a way of happening, you know, yeah. lucky coincidences. Well, one of the things we do here at Oh My Health, There's Hope is we share stories of hope. And I know you have a really powerful one. You were just touching on it right before we um, started going live. So do you want to share that with everyone today? Yes. So, uh, you know, my story of hope, I think, begins with with self-discovery and the the voices in our head and the stories we tell ourselves, and it, which leads to like the questions we ask and the discovery of better questions to ask yourself. So um, I've been recently doing a podcast and within the last year, but the podcast isn't what I set out to do. I didn't go, hey, I wanna be a podcaster. It, be, it was actually a tool um, that I thought would help me with my mission. And if, if you back up way back early in our, my career, I would make one-year goals, I'd make five-year goals. And I would make these goals pretty big for the first year with this, you know, entire, like, to be honest with you, like it, it had something to do with like, Hey, by the time I'm 45, I want to be retired with tons and tons of money. And I wanted to make certain dollars in income. And I wanted to have this level of title in my career and la 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 la. And as, as the days would progress through the year, I wasn't making progress fast enough on my yearly goals. And somebody once told me, they said, hey, you're going to overestimate what you can do for a year and you're going to underestimate what you can do in five years. So I got a little bit frustrated and challenged that like these one-year goals hadn't occurred. So I just kind of abandoned them. I quit kind of following them, quit paying attention. They're always kind of there, but never really that close to it. But if I look back on where I'm at today and some of those goals of like, Hey, this is, I didn't, I didn't retire at 45. So that hasn't happened yet, but I'm also not 45. Um, but, but the, the income, the titles, all those things that I had wanted to have, what I thought were like, Hey, if I achieved those, that would have been beyond my wildest dreams. Like I've surpassed those by, by, by significant amounts. And so I've, I've realized early on, or I guess it wasn't early on, but I realize now that, what we put ourselves out there to do in five years, we're going to underestimate it. So that kind of plays into the story of, what, of where my journey is now. So along the course of, of my path, I've also felt called to do more. Like I wanted to do bigger things, but I wasn't sure what it was. So I always thought it was some sort of entrepreneurial thing that was going to get me um, faster along to, to my goals and dreams of making a bunch of money. And every time I'd get started with something, I'd come to the point where I had to make a decision of was this uncomfortable or not uncomfortable for me personally, like in my head, was I good enough? Was I smart enough? Was I an expert enough to do this? Did I, was I just wasting my time? Was I compelling enough? Was I, you know, um, unique enough to, to really make it? And I would come to that point, I'd be like, you know what? You're not, you're not any of those things, give up. You've, you've come too far. And some of those ideas were like, hey, I just got a business idea and it lasts two or three days and it's abandoned to some stuff that actually started and, and did for a few years. But it always came down to somewhere along the lines, I was telling myself this story that I should give up. But the weird thing was, is there was always somebody that I hadn't met along the way when I was starting that was also kind of starting 
And I look at them today and they didn't give up and they became very successful in what they did. And I've been, and I've been, you know, w watching them grow and encouraging them and, and loving what they're doing. And I look back and I go, man, if I would have just probably stuck with something, I would, um, I would have came a lot farther with it. I, I really let myself got in my head. So this kind of happened over the course of the last, you know, 10, 15 years is constant. Like I want to do something. Oh, you're not good enough. I want to do something. You're not good enough. So finally I said, you know, I'm going to quit pretending I'm going to do something entrepreneurial. I'm just going to focus on what I, what I was doing with my, my current career. And a lot of that had to do with building um, a network or, or networking and meeting people within the industry. So I'd always kind of avoided it too, as a, as a, early on person in my career i didn't go i didn't like going out networking and then if i did i would kind of hang out with the the usual crowd the people i would consider like friends i would have had from college that maybe they worked together so they're they're kind of like like-minded people but they weren't a variety of people in the industry and and my my work required me to meet a few more people and so i started noticing the more people i met with different ideas um different talents different offerings that I was actually able to do my job a little bit better. And not by meaning like, hey, I knew 10 people so I could do my job better, but it's really a toolbox of people I knew that I could call on to solve problems. And the more problems you can solve, the more resourceful you are, the more valuable you are. And so, you know, obviously your, your career takes off when you can solve more problems. And I noticed that, I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. Like the more people I know, it's doing better. So why don't I expand that um, out of a localized industry to a more national, group of people that are within my industry. And I did that for a couple of years. And I, again, watched everything grow um, because of like meeting people. And I was getting out of my comfort zone because I used to hate it so much that I would get anxiety if I had to go to a networking event. And I would get anxiety if I was talking to somebody and I would get anxiety if I had to follow up with somebody. But it started becoming a lot more fun. And what I realized was is when I stopped worrying about if it was about me, but about them, like what could I do for them? Who could I help? Who in my network of people could I introduce them to, to serve them? And who in my network has a problem that this person can solve? And when I started making those connections, I started realizing, hey, this is actually where I'm finding fulfillment. I'm finding a lot of value helping others. So it kind of got my gears clicking. I was like, hmm. Networking's a lot of fun. When I build my relationships, I tend to, you know, improve my 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 spot in life and I find the fulfillment that I've been looking for in these other endeavors. So now we go back to that idea of like what would happen if you set goals for five years out? You 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 kind of know that you're going to exceed what you think is possible because the journey will take you somewhere unknown, unexpected. You just have to kind of be along for the ride and take direction down this path. So I said, what would happen if I really, really went all in and tried to meet a ton of people? And along the way, I'm going to be exposed to new people, new ideas, new opportunities, and stuff I would never have been able to imagine and just kind of be along for the ride. So I was like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to do this. So, so what would I do? And so I said, well, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'd probably need to post more on social media, which felt that uncomfortableness that that you know like hey i'm going to put something up there and somebody's going to judge me for it or nobody's going to like it or somebody's going to comment negatively on it or they're going to say who are you to say you're an expert about this thing you're talking about you you're not and get into an argument i was like i didn't want to do that but luckily for me somebody within my network had been doing something very similar she had started posting um the some side business that she had been working on and i had known her i had always known her as a salesperson this this super passionate salesperson tons of energy tons of conversation big laughter big personality and she's like moving in this direction that's completely different so i said i gotta i gotta ask her like what are you doing like what's what's in your mind like what are you trying to go with this and i just grabbed her for lunch one day and i said i need to know like how do you identify or how do you reconcile your identity of this person you're becoming but everybody knows you as this and this is your career this is your success 
and you're moving this direction, like you're almost like, I'm, I'm getting like, I'm guessing you're going to take this to a point where you're going to be, you know, you're going to leave your career behind to become this new version of yourself. And like, how do you reconcile that? And, and the, and I was curious because I, I had had that belief too. And I, I think it was a limiting belief. Like, how do you say you want to do something bigger, but you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to put, you know, yourself out there. You have to stick your neck out and it's, it's challenging and it's scary. And every time I would do that, I'd go back to that, like, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe somebody else, somebody else has got this message. It's not for me to share it. And after I had that conversation with her, she's like, you have to get outside your comfort zone because if you don't, you're not going to grow. And, and I told her my story. She's like, you're going to get that itch again. It's going to come back. So like, you just have to do it. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do that. So I started posting, you know, dumb motivational quotes. I guess they weren't dumb, but they were just kind of like a little bit of outside the comfort level, something I would normally post. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, somebody's going to not comment or they're going to comment something weird about it. So I'd pull it down. She's like, no, you got to leave it up there. You just got to kind of roll with it. And over time it starts getting easier. And then I started sharing um, more of, I guess, personal revelations about myself, stories I was struggling with. I, I still didn't know what I was going to do with, with things, but I just knew I needed to do more of it. And one of the things I started talking about was um, an internal struggle I had with what a lot of people call gray drinking or sober curious, where it's like, you don't have a rock bottom alcoholic problem, but you definitely drink more often than you feel is, is healthy. And it interferes in the sense with your life, not like you miss work, but you wake up a little lethargic, you're not 100%, you eat poorly when you drink it. So I was just like, hey, I'm, I'm drinking a little too much, two to three nights or two to three glasses of wine a day, but it's every day. So I, I started posting publicly like, I'm, I'm abandoning my drinking for a period of time. And I started talking about it publicly and I started talking about this fitness journey I was on. And all of a sudden, some people started coming up to me that I didn't really know that well, that I knew of them. And they're like, hey, I resonate with your message. You're inspiring me to um, quit drinking, or you're inspiring me to go to the gym and work out more, or you're inspiring me to eat better. And then I had other people I didn't know that well could reach out to me and they said, hey, I'm a you know 25 year recovering alcoholic, and if you need any help and support, I'd love to help you. And they would tell me their story, and I was just like, "Hey, the more I tell my story, the more relatable I am to people." And I didn't realize people were paying attention, and that I was technically inspiring people or giving them some hope. So I was like, "I need to do more of this," and that led me to um, a Gary Vaynerchuk video where he talks about why people should podcast. And I was on this idea of like, hey, I, I need to document this journey of networking a bunch of people to just kind of show like, hey, this is what happens. Like, wouldn't it be cool if it was all recorded in like five years, everybody goes like, how'd you get here? Like, well, here's the whole process. Like, here's all these like interactions I had and they're all documented on social media. But how, how other ways could I, could I do that? And this Gary Vaynerchuk video said, the, the podcast is this. Think about that kid in high school that wasn't that cool, but his parents went away for the weekend. And because his parents went away for the weekend, he had the parties at his house. And who went to the parties? The cool kids. And so by default, he became one of the cool kids because he had the parties at his house. So I was like, that's exactly what podcasting is. It lets you connect with people you might not have met under different circumstances. Outside of your, a lot of it's people like you might consider outside of your clout. Like what reason do I have to email this author of this book I really like to read and, and pick his brain about, you know, the thought process behind it. So I was like, that's a great idea. I'm going to uh, do this podcast. So I, I felt like the podcast was a tool of expanding outside of my comfort zone, but it was also a tool to, um, to network. And the reason why I liked it, it was like, Hey, it's putting me in front of more people. It's, it's a way for me to attract more people to come into my life to connect with. But the really, the really, the really cool thing I like about it is that I am able to share other people that I meet their story with more people. So I'm actually helping them connect and reach the people that they want to talk to, that their story resonates with, that their business can serve. And that's really why I think for me, the value of networking and is, is helping others within your group, less so much about what they're doing for you, but what you can do for them. So I was like, this all kind of fits together. So, so for my story for hope is this idea of, hey, 
we all have limiting beliefs in ourselves. We all tell ourselves some stories that says, hey, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not good looking enough, all these things. But you look out and there's people that are doing those things that you want to do. And guess what? They have those same beliefs in their head. They're just choosing to push past them and get out of that comfort zone. And it doesn't happen overnight. You don't just wake up one day and go, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready for the big time. You have to start at day one. You have to begin a process and you have to kind of, you know, learn as you go. And the things that were really hard to begin with become easier and your challenges become become bigger. But you you become, I don't know, maybe you get a little bit of momentum you get a little bit more confidence, you get a little bit more excitement of challenging them. And all of a sudden you start meeting people that are also like-minded on this journey. You start attracting people into your life that um, whatever you're kind of like, I really need somebody that's got like a, a, some insight on this or a connection over here. They start just kind of like, a, you know, gravitating towards your life because you're on this path to find them. And they support you and you're like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to move through too into the next level. So for to me, this journey of hope is, is like once you start going down your journey, you don't know where the destination is. But if you're just like open minded to the process, like it's going to reveal itself. And if you're aware and your eyes are open, your ears are open, your mind is open, you're going to see opportunities that have always been around you, but you just weren't ready to receive that message yet. And you can take them and you can act on them. And I think you're going to find success. And I wanted to find success to me is if you had a version of yourself that was 100%, like you lived up to everything that you possibly could to your potential, that's the max. And everything else is like this version of you that's trying to live up to that. So you could be 50, you could be 75, you could be 95. So if you can live up to that best potential person of yourself that you possible, you left nothing on the table, you gave it your all at the end of the day, that to me is success. And that is about chasing your journey and you have to be willing to get outside your comfort zone. Otherwise you could be playing it safe and feel like you could have done more. I absolutely love your story. I think one of the key things that I heard from your story is number one, I think the only way you can fail is by quitting. But a lot of the people who are saying they can't do some certain things is a block. And the only person that can stop you from doing those things is yourself. It's not the tools. It's not a bunch of what ifs. The only person that can stop you from being successful is you. So when you get out of your own way, magic happens, right? It, it totally does. And like you said, it's not like a tool. A lot of times when we're trying to get started with something, there's things that need to be done, but they're not important. And like an example might be like, I'm going to, I'm going to start a business. So what do I need to do? I need a website and I need a logo. Like, yeah, they need to be done, but that's not going to move the needle. What you need to do is find, find customers, find people that you can serve and then start crafting whatever that is towards them. So, so whenever somebody says, I can't do something, you go, you got to reach in and ask yourself better questions. So, so like, why, why do you say you can't do something? Well, I've tried everything. Well, you clearly haven't tried everything. You've, you've, you've tried a lot of things and you've figured out what doesn't work, but you can keep asking yourself like, okay, what are, what else could I do? What's another way of looking at it? Like, you know, I tried to grow a business on social media. I got no likes. Well, did you try like going to, you know, a farmer's market? Did you try going down, knocking on doors? Did you try having to, you know, there's a million other things that you could keep trying to do. And so if you just keep asking yourself better questions, what else could I do? And break it down one step further, one step further, one step further to the point where you're like, oh, okay, here's something that's very simple. That's believable that I could achieve, you know? So if you said, hey, I need to make a million dollars this year. Well, that's, a very big number that's very hard to, to accomplish but if you just break it down to like something really small like hey could i could i get three dollars you know off of some some way somehow like for my first sale like yeah i could do that and then you just kind of build from that and and the, build this momentum so i'm a big believer in asking yourself deeper bigger harder questions until you get to the answer of, of possibilities and when you start ch challenging what's possible, then you start having a path to go down. And that could be a business, a friendship, a hobby, a relationship. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just keep asking yourself better questions and you're gonna find the possibilities. By the way, I love exactly what you just said. When I'm working with my clients, I call it hiding. They're hiding 
when they're saying, I can't move forward until I have that website, I have that logo, I have a newsletter, like who are you sending it to? There, mm -hmm. You don't have anybody yet. Why don't we just beta test it? Why don't we get out there and see if there's even a market for this? Get the temperature mm -hmm. of people. What do they want to eat? Like let's feed them what they want to eat and then create that stuff. But if they can't step out from behind all of the things that hide them from really succeeding, they're mm -hmm. probably always going to be stuck behind those things that are keeping them from succeeding. It is. And, and I think like just as much of, as of a fear is like, Hey, not what if it all goes wrong, but there's also a big fear of like, what if it all goes right? Like that's a scary thought too, that you go, Hey, what if, what if this does happen? What if I did go out there and get my first sale and it's bigger than I think I could do to fulfill it, you know? And it's like, you'll figure it out. Like it, it, to me, it's like moving forward, taking action. You'll, you'll figure it out. But whatever you have in mind anyways, is probably going to change significantly from, from your initial idea. So you might as well just kind of roll with it and just kind of go, Hey, it's going to evolve. Let's get the process rolling because we're going to figure it out. And let, the faster we get to it, to it, the faster we're going to get to the, you know, the pivot or wherever that, that journey takes us. Absolutely. You know, you keep bringing up how we feel now of, with our fears. And I like to like compare it to when we were in high school, right? We might have had this big crush on a girl or a guy and they were more popular and we were afraid of being shut down. And then do you remember your first reunion? You go back to and you're a different person. You're more secure. You've got your spouse and your kids and your life going. And you walk up to them, they're like, oh my gosh, I had the biggest crush on you. And you're like, what? You did? I was so <laughs> afraid to talk to you. And the weird thing is they were afraid to talk to you too. So if you could just step out of that fear, imagine the kind of magic that's all around you. Mm -hmm. that, that's so true. I mean, there's, there's countless times where you thought everybody else had it together and they didn't struggle with whatever you struggled with. And then you go chat with them about it and you go, gosh, you know, I'm you're struggling with the same things I was struggling with. And I just thought I was the only one. So, so I put up a mask and, you know, like I always got this was like, I was shy. So I would not talk to people and maybe I had a serious face. And, but if you got to know me, I was like, you know, fun. I laughed and I chatted, but the people that didn't know me were like, Oh, I just thought you're a jerk or mean, or just were like unhappy or didn't like me. I'm like, no, I thought you didn't like me. So I was like scared to chat with you. And, and you find out that. So, that's one of the things that like I've, I've, I've flipped. If, if somebody was going to tell me uh, what to do, like, or ask a question, like, what should I do at a networking event? I kind of use that as an example is go, everybody is there for the same reason. They're there to network. They're there to meet people. And they're just as nervous and insecure as you are about being there. So what are they going to do? They're going to do what you're going to do. They're going to go stand by the wall and not talk to anybody and hate life and wait for somebody to come up and chat with them. Like, that's what I would do. I would go stand there, wait for somebody to come up and talk to me and say, so don't be that person. Be that person that goes and says hi. You know, be that person that somebody else is looking for to, to come and say hi to them because they're waiting for you. And, and if you want to make action happen, you got to be the one that makes it that effort and you'll find that it starts becoming a lot easier and then the people you start meeting because of that like you said you'd go hey I had a misconception of you and you had a misconception of me so we never connected we never could have seen what if but when you just are more open to like saying hey like who's out here who I can meet like you never know who's going to be the right person that's going to sh shape your life in directions you never thought possible so be a very very open minded to just saying hi to anybody you can and and just like see where it goes and and try not to hide behind the misconceptions of what we think people think of us and what we think people are thinking about each other so really just assume everybody loves you <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're first meeting them cuz they don't even know you they, what's not to love right right exactly <laughs> I love it. So do you work with clients? Um, right now, I do not work with clients um, officially. I do advise startup businesses. Um, and I'm looking to, um, I'm on the path of discovering my journey, my voice. And I, I feel there's a path leading me this direction to work with um, businesses. But I'm not in a point where I'm ready to be like, hey, like, come find me. Let's chat about it. It would be more like, Hey, if we were talking and there was a right fit, then it would be something that we would maybe look at doing, but it's, it's, it's a growth. And I, I feel like it's, it's moving that direction.
Well, I heard logo and website from you just now <laughs> because you would be a genius at this. You're clearly in your, your area of genius and you just shine when you're talking about it. So I see great success there. Well, the, I know that's because I've been that person that goes, I got to get the logo right. And you're like, <laughs> this is dumb. Like, you know, we, we spent all this time on a logo and then like the business quickly runs out of steam of, of the idea. So I'm like, I've just, and I've watched other people you know, do, do both. You know, I watch people sp spend a lot of time um, on the things that don't matter and never get going. And I watch people that just, you go, how is that person just like crushing it? They just rushed out and did it. And they're like, I didn't know what I was doing. I just was kind of winging it and I got an opportunity and I just ran with it. And the next thing I know it took off. And so it's, it's really about taking, um, steps that move the needle which is you have to be very clear where you want to go i think uh to to have an idea that i'm going to move down this path um but once you kind of do and you're open to whatever comes your way and you start serving people then then your chances for success are, are more likely to happen for sure 100 percent. i call that the if you build it they will come theory that worked for kevin costner <laughs> it was in a movie but you really got to go get the people so that you know how to feed them correctly right you might make mm -hmm. a website and logo completely off of your target market and they're not going to be hungry for it so it's really mm -hmm. good to go out there and know who your client is because you have them mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll sit there and we, we go there's there's a couple books one of my one of my good friends does this thing with numerology and it it talks about your personality and and there's two things it says it's how you view yourself and how others view you and a lot of times those aren't exactly the same you know the, like there's there's who you think you are and how people think you are and so that's the same thing with a brand or a logo or a business you go hey i think my business is this and I'm doing an arm thing, so you can't really see it, I guess, <laughs> if you're listening to it. But, but like, I think my, I think my, my company provides this product. I think we solve this pain point. I think this is our customers. But then the customers are really the ones that decide what you, what your, your, your brand is, what your product is, and the and the pain point you're serving. So if you start going too far down the path of what you think it is without input from what people believe it is, then you're going to really not be answering the right questions that are being asked and so you got to kind of merge those two together and either craft your story better that's going to explain who you are better or you're going to say hey look you know I'm I I thought I was serving these people but I'm really serving these other people how can I serve them better and change your story uh, to be more in line with what your perceived story is so that's that's truly important too 100%. One of the things that Nate was talking about is he has an incredible podcast, the All In Podcast, and I would totally go listen to that. And I'm, I like him so much, I asked him for some cover art so that we can um, review him in Best Holistic Life Summer Issue, because I think it's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited for that too. Where else can people connect with you? Is a podcast the best place? Um, I usually send people to my website, which is natepeo.com. Um, from there, you can get to the website. Uh, you can get uh, the podcast. You can find you know your favorite place to subscribe to it from there. And then there's all the places to find me on social media. So that'd be the center hub is to go to natepeo.com. Well, Nate, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really enjoyed your story. Yes, I've had a great time chatting with you. Thanks for having me on.